please welcome to the stage Karen Schau. I got a 36 on my first ACT. I got a 1560 on my first SAT. I get fives on all my AP tests and my grades never go below 95%. That was my brother. My brother's name is William Shao and he just graduated from Diamond Bar High School last year as a valedictorian, of course. At his time at Diamond Bar, he was the president of the, the bio Biology Olympiad Club, the treasurer of math team, and a competitor of Science Olympiad. He ended up getting a full scholarship to Johns Hopkins. Growing up, last year, word got out that I was William's little sister, and everyone freaked out. They're related? No way. People that were friends with both of us would come up to me and ask if I was really his little sister, and when I confirmed it, they'd say, but you're so different. I knew what they were thinking. I wasn't as smart as him or as mature as him. I was just me. Hi, I'm William's little sister. Growing up, I was always overshadowed by his achievements, his intelligence, his personality. In middle school, the differences between him and I were only magnified. He got straight A pluses while I only got mediocre grades. He always won gold and silver science Olympiad medals while I hardly even placed. All his teachers praised him for being so smart while I got detentions for talking in class. When I reached high school, I became more and more conscious of the fact that William was the better sibling. Everyone seemed to love him. They called him a god and a legend because he was so smart. I always had the mindset that if I followed everything that he, that he did, if I followed his, his footsteps, then I would be successful too. And so I did. I joined all the clubs that he joined and I took all the classes that he took, even though I wasn't sure if I was actually interested in them. And because I took all the classes that he took, I ended up getting a lot of his old teachers and I constantly got compared to him. If I was just stuck on a problem and I needed help, I would raise my hand and they'd come over, but then they'd say, oh wow, William was really good at this. Or if I was talking to a table partner, they'd say, William was never this loud in class. And even when they didn't say anything, I felt like they were silently judging me for getting B's and C's on my test. I started to resent my own brother for being the perfect student, the perfect child. And my resentment only grew as my parents, who are the only two people whose opinions I actually cared about, constantly compared me to him. If you don't understand Chinese, that means, why is your math grade so bad? Why can't you study harder like William does? And every single time they said this, I would scream at them and tell them that I had studied for hours for the math test. Math just wasn't my strong point. It was Williams. My strong points were sports and socializing, which also happened to be the two things that they didn't care about. Even though I was on varsity basketball since freshman year, they never came to a single game. And in the beginning, I remember scanning the bleachers, trying to find their face. But as the years went by, I stopped looking because I already knew the answer. And even though I can make new friends like Libby and Ben, Wherever I go, they thought it was a waste of time to hang out. The only aspect that they did care about was academics. How high my grades were, how, how high my SAT score was, how high my chances were of getting into a good college. I started to hate myself for not being as smart as William. I grimaced at the sight of the little dash after the A on my report cards, and I beat myself up for getting Bs. Why couldn't I just be as smart as William? And then there was our polar opposite personalities. William has this really calm, collected personality that everyone seemed to like, especially my parents. He was, he was always really patient with my mom and dad, and he was always really calm. And on the other hand, I have a strong, fiery personality that not everyone liked, especially my mom and dad. 
I always had an opinion on everything, and I constantly made passionate remarks. I would always stand up for what I thought was right, but my parents didn't like this. So, at home, I put on this defiant facade that I didn't care what they were saying, pretending like their words had no effect on me. But inside, I felt the thick blanket of shame and disappointment that was cast over me. I could just never be as good as William. I felt myself falling further and further down the rabbit hole as my self-esteem continued to lower. I was just a dumb little sister in everyone's eyes, right? I was the worst sibling in my parents' eyes, in my teacher's eyes, in my peers' eyes, and in my own. Or so I thought. After William left for college, I decided that I wanted to change scenery. And so I moved into his room and moved um, his things into my room. And in the process of doing so, I found something, his yearbook. I remember being really excited that I found his yearbook because, because I thought he had a secret girlfriend. So I was like, yes, now I could see if she wrote a secret comment or something. But much to my disappointment, I didn't find anything about a girlfriend, but I found something much bigger, who William was. A bunch of his friends had written comments in his messages like, you make it, seem, you make it look easy, but I know you put in hours of dedication and hard work to make your dreams into a reality. Or funny things like, Will, 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 Will Nye the Science Guy. And thankful comments like, thank you for enlightening me with your real talk. And after reading these, I saw him in a new light. He wasn't just my overachieving brother anymore. He was a person. A person that I was proud of. A person that made his dreams into a reality. And after having this epiphany, I couldn't resent him for being who he was anymore. The boiling pot of resentment that I had cooked up all these years was now cold. After my realization, I slowly worked up the self-confidence and reassurance that I wasn't just my brother's shadow. I was me. My whole life, I had been blind to the fact that comparing myself to him was like comparing an apple to an orange. Impossible. He had strengths and he had weaknesses, and so did I. Sure, he's a math god and a physics legend, and I'm not, but I'm extremely outgoing and athletic, and he's not. And this time, I'm proud. I'm proud that I can make friends wherever I go. I'm proud that I have such a strong voice. I'm proud that I can help my introverted friends grow their voice. And of course, I'm proud to be on the varsity basketball team. This is William and I, probably centuries ago, in our Halloween costumes. And he's wearing a Superman cape. But, I, but what I also realized was that William wasn't superhuman. He tiptoes around the house in just his boxers. He barely can make cup of noodles. And he looks at memes on the subtle Asian traits on the Facebook group. This was key to me figuring out my own journey. I don't follow in his footsteps anymore because I'm not William. I mean, there's no point in following someone else's footsteps when you can create your own. If you feel like you're in the shadow of someone, whether it's a sibling, a friend, or just someone you, get, you constantly get compared to, assert your individuality and create your own path. This is extremely important to your spiritual wellness. The shadow of inferiority, envy, and resentment was only cast by myself. And I finally understood that the only solution to this is to step out of the shadows and into the sun with William. I'm proud of it, but I'm not just William's little sister anymore. Let me reintroduce myself. Hi, I'm Karen Chow.